You see it in the movies all the time, and even in real life. Getting stuck in an elevator is not at all that uncommon. But to be stuck in one with two girls who are fighting over you? Yeah, that stuff's a bit crazy. Hi, I'm Evan. And one day, the elevator I was on broke down, and I was stuck there with my two crushes. Before we move on with the story, though, don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and hit that notification bell icon to show your support for me. Gemma and Allie were colleagues. I'd known Allie since we were nine. Gemma I'd only known since I started working in the same company, but the two of them were my biggest crushes. Allie was that childhood friend who knew everything about me and who was laid back and chill. On the other hand, Gemma was intense and passionate in summer. They were pretty much polar opposites, and that was probably why they were destined to be rivals. At work, that is. As laid back and relaxed as Allie was, she actually went hard at work. Gemma, of course, was an overachiever at heart, and the two would constantly compete for projects and promotions. That one night, I stayed behind with them to figure out a particularly difficult and problematic project. I was supposed to be Allie's ride as well. Once we finished our work for the night, we packed up and began to head home. Gemma didn't even want to go on the elevator with us at first. It's alright, you take the lift. I need to get my steps in for the day anyway. Don't want to be too dependent on technology like some. She gave Allie a dirty look. It was almost as if she was daring her on a race down the stairs. I sighed. I didn't mind them being all competitive on their own time, but I was tired and I just wanted to go home. And I admit, I may just have wanted to be in the elevator with both of them and no one else. Come on now, Gemma. I'm tired. Allie's tired. We're all tired. It's almost midnight. Let's give the Olympics a rest for now, no? Are you seriously going to race down from the 41st floor? I tried to convince Gemma to get in the elevator with us, but it was too late. Allie had already stepped out and left her stuff with me. Allie began to tie her hair in a bun, readying herself for a race against her top rival. Give us like a 20 second head start, alright? And then you can meet us downstairs at the lobby. I sighed again. <sighs> Alone in an elevator while the girls I wanted to be close to were off busy trying to see who was better than the other. I heard them count. Three, two, one. Before they disappeared down the corridor. And after I'd counted 20 seconds on my watch, I let the elevator doors close and I began my descent. But I didn't have to wait long. Four floors down, the elevator dinged and the doors opened. It was Gemma and Allie, and they were huffing and puffing with exertion. Gemma jumped into the elevator and immediately collapsed in one of the corners. Staircase was... <sighs> blocked. She was breathing really hard. I... forgot... <sighs> They closed off. <sighs> Some access at night. <sighs> I pretended to be disappointed. Bummer. Ellie got in with us as well, but just as the elevator started to move, that metal box shuddered. The lights above us flickered and everything ground to a halt. Oh, crap. I said that half in dread, but a part of me was creepy enough to think this was an ideal situation. Stuck in an elevator with your two crushes? Sounds like the dream, right? But, man, it got intense. Gemma started shouting at Allie, blaming her. If I miss my eight hours of sleep because of this, I swear, Allie, if you didn't take so long to figure out your section of the project, we wouldn't still be here. Allie, of course, did not take that lying down. She was literally lying down on the floor, recovering from her sprint down the stairs, but she stood up and got into Gemma's face. If you weren't always bothering me and distracting me by asking if I was done yet, maybe I would have finished sooner. Ever thought of that, huh? Gemma took her phone out, turned on her torch, and annoyedly pointed it at my face. What are you even doing? You get in here and settle this argument? Isn't it her fault that we got stuck here so late and now we're stuck in an elevator? Allie laughed. <laughs> As if Evan's gonna take your side. I'm his childhood friend. Dream on, loser. Who's the loser? You are. Well, can a loser do this? Gemma began to clutch at the elevator's doors. She screamed as the effort it took her made her muscles bulge out. And as if we were watching anime, her muscles strained on her sleeves so much that her clothes tore and pieces of fabric flew through the air. But when it was all over, the elevator doors stood ajar. We walked free. 
Allie shone her phone's torch on the parts of the room we could see, and it turned out it was definitely a citywide blackout. We could see no other lights outside the windows. There was no signal. I awkwardly patted Gemma's back and thanked her for saving us. I was a little freaked out by her superhuman strength. Meh, it was nothing. If I don't get out of here, I'm gonna lose at least an hour of sleep, and I'll have puffy eyes. The torn sleeves were worth it. Allie was not impressed. Ha! <laughs> that wasn't even that good! Uh, I think it was good, I said. That seemed to make Allie jealous, so she began showing off her gymnastic moves. Yeah, sure, you can open an elevator, but can you do this? Gemma immediately began laughing. <laughs> what? That delicate dancing? Who are you going to help with that? Oh, okay, but can you do this? Allie began typing on her phone, and I got a notification that 10,000 bucks were transferred to my account. How did that happen? I swear there wasn't any signal. Easy, Gemma said. And when she finished tapping on her phone, I got a hundred thousand more on my account. I didn't know what to say. What? What? What's with the money? Just then, we started hearing weird sounds, and it really creeped us out. Both of the girls began standing closer to me. Just a minute ago, they were debating who was stronger. Now they were stuck to me like leeches. And when they clung on to me from fear, I couldn't decide what to prioritize. Being creeped out or enjoying the fact that my crushes were full-on embracing me. Gemma pulled out what looked to be an extendable baton out of her bag, when she flicked it and it forcefully extended with a satisfying click. Man, I tell you, it was so scary. I tried my best to calm them. It's just the wind, it's probably air in the elevator shaft. But when the sounds came again, it sounded like the anguished cries of a hundred spirits, and even I began to get goosebumps. We ran to the closest door, but the moment we got close to it, the door began to rattle. And then, the rattling grew stronger. Emma began to scream in fear. Allie did too. And then, I soon joined in. The door burst open and a flood of light blinded us for a second. We screamed even louder, preparing to breathe our last. And then, a voice came. What are you screaming for? Get out of here! It's late, and I'm in the middle of my meal. Jeez. It was the maintenance guy. He let us out and we finally made it back to the outside world. We laughed at how silly we were to be scared of the dark. And then Gemma suggested, Hey, it's only 1am and it's a Saturday. I bet I can make a better midnight snack than you. Came on, said Allie. Somehow I got roped into it. But I wasn't complaining. Gemma gave us a ride in her car and when we got to her place, I was shocked. Was she a billionaire? The house was massive! The girls immediately began a food battle to see who could impress me more with their cooking. I don't know how the night turned into that, but it did. Gemma and Allie finished at the same time. Gemma gave me stir-fry noodles with chicken and Allie plated up a burger. I can't decide. They're both so amazing! Oh my god, I can't stop eating either of them! I know how to settle this said Gemma. I bet I can kiss better than you do. Not likely. I don't know if it was all a dream, but the girls took turns kissing me. First Allie, and then Gemma. But honestly, they were both amazing. And so I said, It's another tie. Gemma laughed. Ha! Now you're just taking advantage. I think he likes us, Allie. I think he does. I blushed. Well said Gemma. If you were to choose, who would you choose? I, I, uh, I can't. I like you both a, a lot. I really do. I, I can't choose. Well then, there's only one solution, said Allie, and Gemma agreed. They both went in for a kiss, but the moment I closed my eyes, I don't know how it happened, but I found myself driving. In the passenger seat of my car was Allie and she was holding a newborn. She was looking at me with so much love. Ah, I decided to choose Allie after all. Makes sense, she was my childhood friend after all. But then, when we got home, another surprise waited for me. It was Gemma, and behind her were two identical girls. She greeted me with a kiss and a hug. Welcome home, babe. Babe? So, those twins are... 
Are my kids too? What have I done? Inside, it was a total mess. We had two of everything. When I asked what the house was like that, Allie answered me. Well, I can't lose to Gemma, so whatever she has, I want it too. She has twins now, but we'll keep trying, won't we? I'll get my twins too, won't I? Huh? I'll get my twins, right? My head began to hurt. The world melted before my eyes, and everything spiraled away. From afar, I could hear Allie and Gemma's voices. Hey, Evan! Evan, wake up! Huh? Huh? I blinked my eyes open and found myself slouched over my desk. Gemma and Allie were looking down at me with a weird expression on their faces. You fell asleep. We finished the project. And you were saying some... Weird things in your sleep. Yeah, dude, it was pretty weird. Like, what? It's better if we don't talk about it. Yeah, for real. Good night, Evan. Good night. It wasn't until about a month later that Allie talked to me about my sleep talking. I told her what I could remember about my dream, and we ended up laughing about it. And I plucked up the courage to kiss her. Thanks to that embarrassing night, Allie and I started dating.